Friends, the love and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. My name is Bob Root, and I'm the Supply Minister at Trinity Church until July the 1st, when we eagerly wait the arrival of the Reverend Andrew McPherson, who's coming to join the Trinity Bob Cajun Provenance Pastoral Charge. It's a gift to share this time with you this morning. So I invite you to take a deep breath and to enter into this time of worship as Meg plays the prelude for us. If you have been out of the house recently, even to the end of the driveway, in or around Bob Cajun or many other places, you're putting your feet on the traditional lands of the Michisagi and the Shinabe people who've lived in this area since time immemorial and cared for it lovingly. We're going to begin this morning by lighting our Christ candle. If you have a candle at home, now would be a good time to find it and to be to light it. We light it as a reminder that despite all the challenges in our world today, still there is a light that lives deep within each one of us. And as well, we light a second candle, a candle of peace and reconciliation. This is a call out of ourselves to share light and love with everyone we meet. Thanks be. And together we sing. of our own homes we're gathered for worship today. Some are dressed for church. I'm guessing some are still in PJs. Some are drinking coffee. It matters not. What matters is that you're here and that we are together even while we're separate. In this time we seek connection to more than ourselves, to holy mystery, looking for strength for the day and bright hope for tomorrow. May this be a time of great blessing for each of us as we continue on our journey. Our opening hymn is in Voices United at 179 or on the screen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. 
is spring. As always in this part of the world, this is a bashful season, appearing and disappearing, afraid to come out in full bloom. Nonetheless, our spirits rise to meet its promise. We are eager for a new beginning. Today, the scriptures we receive will tell stories of fresh starts, dramatic changes of direction, new possibilities. God, may your spirit meet our spirits, so that the whole of our being may rise to greet your promise, fulfilled to, for us in Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And Ted Sturman has agreed to read scripture for us. Thank you, Ted. Good morning. Today's scripture is taken from the book of Luke, and it's titled The Walk to Emmaus. It's very common to hear this passage in the weeks following Easter. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in the days. He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in both deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were our hearts not burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here endeth the word. Amen. Thank you, Ted. And now we're going to have a Ministry of Music piece by Carl. I'll just, uh, I'll just unmute you here. You're ready to go. Bob, I also like to play a piece for the first line workers and all the people at the East Coast, if well, I may. Absolutely.
Thank you, Carl. Much appreciated. This morning, I'd like to invite you to come for a walk with me. We're going to do, we're going to Jackson's Park, which is about a 10 minute walk from my house. And we're going to walk a loop that I walk most mornings. I love to be outdoors. And every day offers different experiences, even in, in surroundings that are familiar. So please come with me for this walk as I offer a reflection on the scripture that Ted read for us. On this walk, you'll hear the sound of my footsteps sometimes, some birds singing, and perhaps even a bit of huffing and puffing. The story of the walk to Emmaus is one of my foundational Bible stories. It's one of those stories that sticks to the ribs of my soul. So we're going to look at it a little more closely for a few minutes. To get us in the right space, we have to go back a few Sundays. This is a story from the tail end of Easter Day. It had been a long day. While it was still dark, the women had gone to the tomb, and then they came back running to the others with unbelievable early morning stories. Some of the disciples had gone to see for themselves, and they too were both astonished, perplexed, and terrified by what they saw or didn't see. The two disciples in our story weren't among the inner circle, but they were faithful followers. And so they too were astonished and perplexed and profoundly, profoundly affected by what they heard from the others. You know those times in life that make no sense to us at all. There's a lot of that going around these days. That senseless tragedy in Nova Scotia, which has touched people dear to our hearts. The many losses through COVID-19. Mystery of how some folks don't seem to get it and continue to do things that may cause harm to others rather than help. Like those disciples so long ago on that dusty road, there are many things that cause us to shake our heads in dismay. When they're joined by the stranger, he asks them why they're so upset, and they can hardly believe his question. Have you ever noticed that when something is really important to you, you can't imagine the whole world doesn't know about it? I mean, how could they not? But the stranger joins them on their journey in that gentle way that folks sometimes do, asking just the right questions, sometimes saying nothing at all, unblocking their block paths as they make their way step after step after step on their seven mile journey to Emmaus. I love the message in this passage that Jesus walks with us on every pathway of our living whether we know him or not. I love that he offers a friendship of the heart to them, listening in such a way and holding their sacred story so gently that their hearts burned within them, all as they walk along the path. Walking is a spiritual discipline for me. If I'm trying to sort something out in my life, I'll often go outside for a walk. Sometimes I talk out loud, sometimes I sing. I have a button that I wear on my jacket sometimes that says, beware, I sing opera on forest trails. So if you're in the woods and you hear an odd sound, it could be me. Sometimes on my walks, I cry. Sometimes I'm just quiet. For me, it is the action of putting one foot in front of the other time after time that helps bring insight and understanding. This message is titled Solvatur Ambulando, a Latin phrase which means it is solved by walking. I first saw the phrase in this park on one of those pillars you may remember from the beginning of our walk. It's often attributed to St. Augustine, but it's made its way through the pages of history. This was the experience of those two disciples. It is solved by walking. Having said that, of course, they had no choice. There was no other way to get home except to walk. But I like to think that walking, even because they had to, helped them to make sense of their lives. 
by engaging their deep grief in the loving presence of another, they began the journey of healing. This, of course, is not the end of the story. They finally arrived at home, and then the stranger made as if he was going to go on his way, and they couldn't let him go. And I know that feeling, too, and something really wonderful is happening. And I don't fully understand it, but I want to hang on to it. I don't want it to end. So they offered some hospitality and invited him in to share a meal. And in the breaking of the bread, suddenly everything made sense. They knew who he was. They understood the burning in their hearts. They know. They know. And then he's gone. He vanishes from their sight. But now they understand. And now they get it in a way they never thought they would again. And so they hop up from the table and head back that seven-mile journey to Jerusalem to find the others and share their good news, their Easter story, with amazement and joy. The story of Jesus breaking bread at that table is my favorite way to invite people to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Not the pouring out of the blood and the beaten body, but life shared intimately and deeply. Life broken open like a loaf of bread in such a way that all come to know that life is sacred. All life is meant to be shared. All life offers possibility. Possibility and hope. I had this sensation the other night when I was watching the news. We've all been deeply touched by the pandemic at Pinecrest Nursing Home and in so many other places. But feeling especially for the residents and the families and the staff of Pinecrest who've been touched in such devastating ways. And we've heard the story of Lorraine Button from the Trinity Congregation who had COVID-19 and who was really ill and yet has recovered. Lorraine knits mitts, hundreds of them every year, for children and others who need them. It's her ministry. And as the COVID outbreak seems to settle at Pinecrest, residents can once again go outside for walks. So the news clip showed the staff lined up outside the front door like an honor guard. And the first resident to come out to walk was Lorraine. And it felt to me like it was early Easter morning and she was walking out of the tomb into the light of a new day. Lorraine is a resurrection story in our day and time. Salvatore Ambulando, it is solved by walking. As I said earlier, this is one of my foundational stories. And part of the reason for that is my understanding that Jesus is always with me, always close beside me, always at my side, ahead of me, behind me, above me and below me. I like the prayer that says, Jesus walks with me everywhere with one hand on my shoulder and the other on my mouth. In the spring of 2004, I lost that relationship with Jesus. I was on sabbatical and I was hiking St. Cuthbert's Way in the north of England and the south of Scotland. It begins at Melrose Abbey and it's a walk that's 100 kilometers in length. It ends at Lindisfarne, Holy Island. I was hiking with a friend. And sometimes, like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, we talked deeply about matters of the heart, and sometimes we were just quiet. But we walked together for several weeks, and it was good. As we got to the top of a hill on a spring day, with blue sky and fluffy clouds and warm sunshine, with the lambs bleeding in the fields and the birds singing their songs, with creation renewing itself through growth, all at once I felt that old relationship with Jesus slipping away. It was ending. I didn't understand it, but all that I had known before seemed to be finishing. What I discovered instead was a whole new presence of Jesus with me and around me in all creation. In every leaf, 
in every bird song, in every blade of grass, even in the driving rain and the cold wind. I came to understand that wherever my feet take me is sacred ground, and he is part of it. My heart burned within me. Earlier this week, we observed Earth Day, and this year is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, a movement which began in the United States in 1970, but now involves a billion people in more than 190 countries around the world. The United Church of Canada acknowledges the importance of this when in 1994 we added a line to our creed that we would live with respect in creation. Honoring our mother who gives us life, caring for her with respect, living with creation and with one another in right relationships. These are the things that bring new life today. You may have seen that woman with her dogs earlier in our walk, putting her doggy bags in the garbage. That's caring for creation. It's an opportunity for us all. Melissa Breyers has a website called treehugger.com. And this is what she says about Earth Day. On the 50th anniversary of the planet's big day, the world is on lockdown and there will be neither parties nor parades in Earth's honor. And you know what? Mother Nature is doing a happy dance regardless. A pandemic is obviously devastating for humans, but pollution has plummeted and wildlife is enjoying the freedom to roam in places long off limits. Mother Nature's like, this is the best Earth Day ever. She then goes on to offer a bit of wisdom from others. Henry David Thoreau once wrote, I took a walk in the woods and came out taller than the trees. And Celtic theologian John Muir says, in every walk with nature, we receive far more than we seek. And finally, that great Canadian sage, Alec Trebek says, if you can't be in awe of mother nature, there's something wrong with you. As we continue to live in these days of both challenge and opportunity, may we have open eyes and open hearts to hear what Spirit is saying to us through the gift of story, through the gift of heart friendship, through the gift of creation, that we might live together in a good way, that the whole world will find new energy and hope in loving and caring. So thank you for joining me on my walk this morning. It's good to have your company on the road. May every step your feet take you be on holy ground. Amen. And our next hymn is on the screen. It's called As We Walked Home at Close of Day. Meg will play an introduction and then the verses.
Wesley is going to offer our quietness of prayer, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Thank you, Joel, for doing this. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. As your thoughts turn toward God, you may place your hand over your heart. Let us pray, expecting God to meet us where we are at this very moment. Loving God, as we worship today, we pray for a trickle. No, a flowing stream, no. We pray for a torrent of your love to refresh us and flow through us like healing waters. For a world overcome by news that overwhelms us, we are thirsty for your good news. We thank you for life's simple blessings, the song of a bird, the support of a loving church family, old friends and new, neighbors who care, warm houses, life, and the very breath we breathe. Frontline workers who are willing to risk their own lives to care for and protect us and your love that is new each morning. Lord, we struggle to understand the evil that persists in our world. We pray that you will bring comfort and healing to our Canadian friends in Nova Scotia who have lost sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles, and dear friends in this senseless act of violence. We pray for our own Reverend Walter and Juanita who are grieving losses and unable to be with their loved ones to give them support and comfort. May they feel the arms of our Trinity family holding them in our hearts and feel our virtual hugs of comfort. We pray for our country and its leaders as they struggle to guide us through this COVID-19 pandemic. Give them wisdom and guidance to make the decisions that will lead to a world that lives out your vision of peace and justice. We pray for the people of Trinity and to our community that need your healing in their lives for those suffering from loss of employment, for those needing physical, spiritual, or emotional healing. We pray for those in our nursing homes and the brave medical personnel that care for them. Open our eyes to show us how we can bring healing and help for those who are hungry, for those who have lost hope, for those suffering mental illness for those who do not know that they are loved by you. Help us put our trust in you, God, letting go of our fears and worries and looking forward to a new life and new ways of living out our mission to help and to be there for others who need us during these days of self-confinement. We come broken and empty carrying heavy burdens, but trusting because we know that you love and care for us. Our souls cry out for the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Joe, for those beautiful and heartfelt words that uh, Take us deeper into God's heart. 
Our next act of worship will be the offering, and I want to thank you for your ongoing care and support of the life and work of the church. In these unusual times, there are still three ways you can support our pastoral charge financially. Uh, you can mail in your donation. You can now do e-transfer, and the instructions to do that are on our website, www.trinityprovidence.com, or through the Donate Now button that's also on the website. This is, of course, also in addition to the support of the life and work of the church that each of you is doing where you live as you reach out to care for others the best way we can in these days. So as you ponder the offering that you are able to make and the offering of your life, Meg is going to play a piece for us and then we'll sing our song of dedication. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we go about our daily tasks, as we share the story of our faith, as we share our bread with the stranger, may we know the presence of the risen one, and by this presence may our hearts burn with love within us, so that we may share all our gifts in gratitude and praise. Amen. And our hymn is a good Earth Day hymn called by Earth and Sky.
Friends, thank you for joining us this morning, and we go out with a blessing. The blessing of the journey be yours, the blessing of purposeful walking, the blessing of sturdy companionship, the blessing of new understanding, the blessing of a welcoming destination, the blessing of God made known in all creation and in every act of love. All these blessings be yours this day and this night and forever. Amen. And together we sing.